In this video, I want to talk to you about improving presentations in your reports, in particular, these important corporate reports like this one. Now, this is a bit of a different video. I'm filming this from Sicily in Italy. The scenery and the colors are beautiful. When you look outside, you want to keep looking, you want to keep observing. The colors really grab your attention. Now that's what I was thinking when I was going through this report. There is a lot of great information in there. A lot of it though is presented in a very monotone, black and white, plain type of way. Now corporate reports don't have to be as exciting, as interesting as looking at scenery like this. And no one expects them to be. But they can be presented in a way that makes it easy for the reader to process this information, to digest the information. Now by that, I don't mean that you should add glitter to this or you should add a lot of colors or a lot of images. What I mean is that to organize and present the data in a way that brings the attention to the data and makes it so easy for the reader to process it that they just want to read on. Now what I'd like to do in this series and I call it a series because it's going to be a couple of videos, is to go through some of these graphs and some of these tables and talk about ways that I would personally optimize them. In today's video, what I'd like to cover is this case. This table shows the 2015 sales volume information for each mini model. This comparison to previous year, in this case 2014, and the proportion of mini sales volume as compared to the total. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Excel charts and graphs, but I also think that tables have their place in reports, so you don't always have to use a chart to visualize the data. In this specific case, though, I think using the proper visualization with the right combination of charts could actually do this more justice. If you want to find out how, stay tuned. Before we think about what graph we can use to visualize this, let's think about the message of this table. For me, what BMW wants to show here is to report a significant increase for their mini classical brand. So if you take a closer look at the 2015 numbers, what is the biggest number? It's right here. And that's for their mini three and five door brand. Now let's take a look at the comparison to previous year. There is over 50% positive change as compared to the sales volume in 2014. Now let's take a look at the second biggest. That's the mini countryman, right? But in comparison to previous year, there is a minus 25%. Now they've also added totals here so that we know we're looking at the full picture. So we're not missing any mini models in here. You can see that the way I went through it, it just takes a little bit of time to try to figure out what's the biggest number. Then we have to look here. We take a look at comparison to previous year. We take a look at the percentage and so on. So going through the numbers is a bit more time consuming than if we have a graph like this. So in this case, we're showing the exact same information. We're just showing it in a different way. Now, just by looking at this very quickly, we can immediately see that the first model, the classical mini model, is the biggest here. And it was the only one that had such a great positive change in comparison to 2014. We can also see the proportions here. This graph is kind of like a buy one, get one for free for visualizations, because we're showing two things in one graph. One is the proportion of the sales volume in terms of the total, and two is the actual value for the sales volume in 2050. And on top, we're using a second graph to show the percentage change to previous year. And we also know that this is a total because we're showing the total in here. So now let's see how we can set this up in Excel. I input the data from the screenshot into Excel cells here. So you can see this is the 2015 information. That's the total. I just made the sum in Excel. 2014, same thing. For the change to 2014, I calculated this directly from this data. 
and the 2015 in percentage, so that's the sales volume proportion to the whole, I again just put a formula in here. Okay, so we have all the information right here. Let's visualize this. So the first question is, we saw that we want to add a bar chart, right? But what do we pick? Do we pick this and this information? Or do we pick the proportion information? Okay, let's take another look at our end result. We're showing both, right? But which one do we need to pick when we insert the chart? The key here is what do you see on the axis? Okay, so ignore what you see shown as the data values for this. Just think about what do we see on the axis? That's what we need to pick. And that's the proportion, right? So let's go back. That's the only thing that I need to highlight is this one. I'm going to hold down control, highlight this and insert a bar chart. First thing, it's inserted it the other way around. Okay, because that's just what Excel does by default is that it puts the first one that's on your table as the last one on your bar chart. So we just want to switch things around in this case. And to do that, we just need to activate the chart options. I'm just going to double click on the axis. And from here, okay, so from the first option here, we're going to tick mark categories in reverse order. Now I'm just going to remove these grid lines and I'm going to bring them a bit closer to each other. So I'm going to reduce the gap width. So highlight first the series, then go to the series options and we can reduce it to 60%. Now I'm going to add in the data labels. So right mouse click on the series, the entire series, add data labels. And by default, obviously Excel is adding the same data labels of what I plotted, right? So that's the percentage here. I don't want the percentage. I actually want to see the full values. And this is a great setting that came since Excel 2013. First, you highlight the data labels. Okay, so mine are already highlighted. Then we go to the label options and we click on values from cells. So you have the option to overwrite the labels that Excel shows you using value from cells. And now here, I'm going to highlight the values that I want to be shown here. So I'm going to click OK. And you see here, it's showing that value plus still the percentage. So that's the original value. I don't want this anymore. So I'm going to untick it. Now, if you have any version of Excel prior to Excel 2013, there is a way for this. So don't worry. All you have to do is to click on each of the first data labels. So that 66% here, you click on it, you go here, you put in the equal sign and you click on the data label that you want shown and then you press enter and you have to repeat that for every single data label. So it's a bit time consuming, but you can get there and it's dynamic because you're using cell references. So the moment the value in these cells change, that value here in your chart will also change. Okay. So now the next thing I want to do is to just change the color of this and I'm going to do it directly from here since gray is a popular color in that report. And also for me, I'm going to choose a gray color. Now what I'm going to do is to add a total to this chart. So I'm going to add in some space at the bottom. I'm going to click on the chart so that it's active and go to insert from shapes, click on the text box. Okay. You can also insert directly using the text box here. So just click anywhere in your chart and immediately before you do anything, go to the formula bar, type in an equals and reference the total that you want shown. So in our case it's 2015 total. I'm just going to reference this so you can see it's referencing here and press enter. And once you do that, then you can position this where you want. Now the advantage of doing this is that when you move your chart, this is already in there. It's embedded inside the chart. So it automatically moves with your chart and you don't have to group anything. I'm just going to insert a line. So again, click on your chart so that it's active. Go to insert from shapes, click on the line, 
Now I wanna make sure the line is straight and this is something that can get very annoying in Excel or PowerPoint or Word is to draw straight lines. So hold down the shift key before you start drawing your line. And that way you make sure that you have a straight line. Okay, so that's starting to look good. I'm just gonna take away the shape fill from here and the shape outline and move this down here. Okay, so we got this part done. What I also wanna show in this chart is the change to previous year. So it's this information. Now, since I already have set up this chart and I like this design, I just maybe just wanna change the colors here. What I'm gonna do is to control C on this chart, go here, control V, and now change the series to the series that I want shown. So that's basically this one. So I'm just gonna push these over. That's a good starting point. I just need to do update some of this formatting, change the colors and so on, and position this in front of here. First thing I wanna do is to remove these labels because I have them here. And if I'm planning to put this chart in front of this, I don't need to repeat these labels again. It's just additional unneeded information. If I press delete here, it also deletes my line, my axis line. And in this case, I don't want it to delete my axis line. I'm just gonna press Ctrl Z to go back. I just want it to hide the labels, but keep my line, this little tiny gray line in there. To do that, I'm gonna to go to axis options. So I have to click on this first, go to the options, go to label options here. And for label position, select none instead of next to axis. The next thing I'm gonna do is to add in the data labels. Click on the series, right mouse click, add data labels. Now here, I'm happy with these labels. I wanna show the percentage. I don't wanna show anything else. And because I'm showing the percentage already, I don't need the axis here. I'm just gonna click on it and press delete. Now let's update the title for this. That's basically that title. So I'll make a formula reference Go to the formula bar, type in equal, reference to this cell. And now let's arrange the plot area and the chart area. So this part is the plot area, that's the chart area, and both of these you can control. So you can expand the plot area to fill up the chart area and then make the whole chart area smaller. Let's think about the colors. Optimally, I'd like to have anything that's on the positive side of the axis to have a different color to anything that's on the negative side. Since Excel 2010, we have a great automatic option for this so that we don't need to use any workarounds. And that option is in the fill options of the series. Do you see it anywhere here? It's called invert if negative. Okay, so you click that. It seems like nothing happened on this side, but on this side, these went white and this just kept its color. As a first step, decide on the color of the positive ones, and then you get the option to decide on the color of the negative ones. So let's say for positive ones, I wanted a light gray. And now you see what came up? We have the ability now to choose the color of the negative ones. And let's go with a light orange. Now for the total here, we don't wanna show the total of 2015, obviously. I'm just gonna change the formula and reference this and press enter. So now all I have to do is to put this in front of the original chart. And it's quite easy because I use the same chart to get it done. So I'm just gonna put it on top here. I wanna make sure I just horizontally drag this across. I'm gonna hold down the control key and click on the border on the edge of this chart. I'm gonna click on it. And when I see these circles here, I can move it across with my keyboard. And this way I make sure that I stay in the same position. As a last step, what I can do is to group these two separate charts together so that every time I move it, I just move it as one chart. So I just held on control, I clicked on both of them. I'm gonna right mouse click, group, 
and group. Now it's one chart, but I can move together as one. Let's just double check that this part is dynamic. Let's stick to Countryman and let's change this to 70,000. Okay, became gray, 15%. So I don't want to change the original data. Let's press Ctrl Z to go back. I find this a great way of visualizing this data. Now let's take a look at these side by side. Which one do you think is easier and faster to understand? I'd also very much like to hear from you and how you think this table can be optimized. In the next videos, we're going to be taking a look at these cases. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, consider subscribing.